Is Tremor in fifth position? They're on a cracking little run at the moment, um, but they had a poor start um, at the first five games. And I mean, generally, they are still struggling to score goals. And that's what we want to dive into here, because I think a lot of people are kind of writing off Tramir Rovers and they shouldn't. So it was a really poor start. But in that last game that um, uh, that they played, we were just talking about it there. Great win against Colchester United. Um, 2-0 victory. Josh Hawks with the first one. We're going to be showing you some analysis on Josh Hawks in just a second. Um, deflected, a little bit lucky. Colchester will be gutted with that one, to be honest. But when it's going your way, it's going your way. And Peter Clark, what a header from the 39-year-old. He is absolutely fantastic for them. And they, at the back, are absolutely brilliant. And that's what we're going to dive into now. So, as I said, poor start to the season for them. Only picked up five points from the opening five matches of the season. At, but in those matches, they only conceded two goals. And the, and they actually currently have the least amount of goals conceded in the EFL right now with four goals conceded. This is similar to last year. Mickey Mellon, and it sort of highlights the, the good job that Mickey Mellon is doing at Tranmere in terms of making them defensively resolute. Um, they've got six clean sheets so far this season and 0.4 goals per 90 being conceded. And last season, this kind of comes off the back of last season. They only conceded 1.1 goals last season per 90. They kept 19 clean sheets, finished seventh just outside the playoff. Uh, sorry, in the playoff places, uh, excuse me. But they've gone to the next level this year, and it's about putting bodies on the line. They are blocking 33.3% of their shots that they're facing uh, at the moment, uh, which is the second best behind Hartlepool. And this is the crazy stat. This is the crazy one. Tramir have conceded an XG of 13.96. So they should have conceded basically 14 goals this season, uh, which is higher than the average of 12.6. But they've only conceded four. So the big question here that we want to show you now is, are they defending avidly and doing fantastically, or are they the luckiest team in the Football League right now? My belief is that defensively, Tranmere are incredibly intelligent. And uh, I've got a few clips here that I'm excited to, to show you, just to show you what exactly Tranmere are doing right now. Now, this is the first clip. This is from uh, the Rochdale game, which actually they lost. But I think you can see by the fact they're only conceding four goals so far uh, this season. I think it shows just how, firstly, how well they're led as a, as a back five. I'm going to let it run for a second. Of course, Tranmere in, uh, in white, Rochdale uh, in, in the blue. And they play with a back five and then a midfield three. So if we see it run here, Rochdale, of course, have got the ball at the moment. And if I pause it in a second, there we go. We've got a back five for Tranmere Rovers, right? And what's great about them is just they're very intelligent in terms of the narrow press that they put together. If I do a straighter line, they've also got this midfield three as well here. So very, very solid there, but that can be picked apart if teams can get in between the lines. So you've got to be, you've got to know when to press, but you've also got to know who your runners are. And that's a, that's a really great thing that Tranmere are very well marshaled by by Peter Clark in the middle here. Let me just circle him. And they've got a deal with Jake Beasley there, who's the striker for, for Rochdale. They've got Odo here as well. But generally, everyone knows who their man is. And if the free man is out here, out wide, they're absolutely fine with it. The thing that they don't want is people coming through the middle here. So if we let it run on a little bit longer, you can see how tenacious this Tranmere side is. Yes, it's a low block, which can be a little bit dangerous for them. But you can see, again, ready, ready to go. But there's some danger coming here because you've got a player out here that Josh Hawks has to follow. And also, you've got too many bodies, really, here with your back three. So you need to be careful in how you're going to marshal your defence and be, you know, almost attacking in your defensive nature. So if we carry on, what we can see is the tenacious nature of, of Jay Spearing. But what's really important there is, look, the following of the run. And it allows, he knows that he's going to take him. He can keep his position here as well. And the centre-back can be positive in how he defends. If we just ro Let's roll that back again. Because if they don't follow that, that man, they're in trouble. He sees his runner and he follows him and it allows everyone to be positive. So they're still snapping at heels. Jay Spearing's trying to read the press here. He thought it might have been here and he might have been able to read it. Doesn't need, doesn't happen, but the ball's coming back to a safer area, so they're still okay anyway. If we let it run, so they've still got their shape. They get back into the shape. It's really nice. And then once again, you've got a three here. You've got your back five as well. They look so, so solid here. So, so solid. And now you've got O'Keefe with the ball 
and he doesn't know what to do. The reason he doesn't know what to do is, again, because Tramir just so well drilled. And you can see this by, you've got your strike here, he's looking to cut out this pass. You've got Callum McManaman looking to stop this pass. Uh, I think it's Watson you've got here, he's ready to get on him. And then also that allows Jay Spearing to be, you know, proactive in terms of a, a sort of gentle press from a deep area. And if you see it as, we've, as we play it on, because of this cracking defensive um, nature of, of Tramir and how well drilled they are, what happens is O'Keefe kind of runs out of space. He's put under pressure. He plays a ball and Tramir have got the ball back. And then they're now in a, in a lovely position to, to start a game. It just shows that they're, they're really well drilled when they haven't got the ball. But of course, they have to have their players kind of back in possession. Uh, sorry, back in, 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 um, in position. Sorry. Second clip. This is a game against Salford, a game that they won. What I really like about this one is a couple of things. First of all, this is Trammy, of course, with the ball. This is Chris Merry. We're going to be talking about him in just a second. Chris Merry's with the ball there. And they're committing bodies, which shows that they're still trying to obviously score goals, despite not scoring that many this season. We'll talk about that in a second. But what needs to be good for a lot of teams, or any team, is you've got to be good in transition. You've got to get your your, your setup back and and sort out the jigsaw put the pieces back into the jigsaw and that comes from understanding your shape and being switched on to to, to the uh, the space around you so let's let this play for a bit what we'll see is Tramia trying to play i think the ball goes into nicky maynard he gets um they aren't able to keep a hold of it and then of course there's there's a break here so sulford are, are on there on their way so here is now a moment where you could have some problems if you if you're not working hard to get back and if your midfielders aren't being switched on, and of course, if you've got some runners coming through as well. Let's keep it playing. And the person that I want to show you, I might show you this twice if it's all right, because what happens here is they get their shape back as a collective, and Chris Merry, the defensive midfielder on this occasion, comes out and gets it. If I take it back, let's take it back. What you can see is the fantastic work from Chris Merry, and it's such a small thing, right? But watch Chris Merry now. Watch Chris Merry. He's going back and he's looking over his shoulder there to see what's going on. Am I okay with my midfielder here? Is he on his way back? Uh, how are we looking here? Because there's going to be some run runners coming in a minute. we we'll carry it on. Again, another little look around his shoulder. And now they're starting to get sub. Another look around his shoulder there. See it again? And now he knows that if the ball goes this way, he can, he can, let me draw that again. If the ball goes this way, he can go and commit. He knows he's got a guy in front of him and he's safeguarded there. He knows he's got a centre back over here. He knows he's got his other centre midfielder here as well. So again, he can be positive with his defensive play. And, and that's exactly what he does because he knows what's going on around the field. He comes inside and he goes, doesn't he? Straight away, goes and wins it. And, you know, the less said about his pass after that the better but that's not the point the point is that defensively they're just fantastic final man i want to talk about has got to be jay spearing 32 year old and he's just spearing by name spearing by nature check that out for a tackle i'm going to show that again he's a crunching tackle machine 2.5 tackles per match um, which is is more than it sounds like and you just don't see tackles like that much, that much more uh, these days he really does lead by the front uh, in that midfield and you know, when you think of 32 year old midfielders, normally you think, OK, they're going to sit there and they're going to sort of, you know, this is a guy who was at Liverpool. He's just going to sit there, pass the ball about and not worry about it too much. Yes, he has had a, he's received a red card, but he sets the tone for the team. And I think it's really, really important. And as the team's so strong defensively in time, they will get better going forward. And look at this for a tackle. There he is. Um, he doesn't need to be doing that kind of work. But he is, and he's setting standards. And I think that's a great, that's a very promising thing to see for, from Tramir. So for me, defensively, as you've seen there, really, really impressive. Are they lucky with their XG so far? I don't think so. I think they're performing so well as a unit that they deserve to be conceding just four goals this season. Credit's got to be given to the two goalkeepers that have played this season. You've got both ends of the spectrum, a 40-year-old Joe Murphy and Ross Duhan, uh, who's on loan from Celtic, 23-year-olds come in and, and did brilliantly against Forest Green, making five saves recently. The problems, though, for Tranmere are going to be in attack. If they want to get out of this division, which they should do because they have the players to do it, you know, big names in terms of Nicky Maynard and Callum McManamum as well. Uh, there's no reason why they can't get out of it. But at the moment, they're 14th for XG at the moment. Um, 
and they've only scored eight goals, which is just, it's not really enough. The XG at the moment is 1.25 per match. If they want to win games, they've really got to do a little bit more than that. And the big problem has been away from home. They're the only team in League Two who are still yet to score away from home. Whilst at home, they've scored eight goals in five games. And the big thing for them is that, yes, they have that defensive structure, but they maybe need to be that little bit more cavalier going forward. And I think they can be. Like If you look at the shot zones for their home games, I think we can show you it now, 58% of their shots in the six-yard box, which is which is really, really healthy, right? If we have a look at it for the away uh, games, just 49%. You know, that's the problem. And that means uh, you're going to be shooting from low XG areas or you're not creating as much as, as, as you need to. So for a team that's currently doing very, very well for themselves, sitting in fifth in the league at the moment, they've got the mean defence. But if you look at their goal difference uh, amongst anyone in the division, really there's very few teams with um, single figures for both after 11 games. So for Tramit, I applaud what they're doing, but... Moving forward, they maybe need to score a few more goals if they want to get themselves back into League One. So that's those are my thoughts on Tramir. Let me know what you think if you're a Tramir Rovers fans. Let me know what you think about Jay Spearing in particular. I'm really, really impressed with what he's been doing so far this season for them. Cracking player to have in their side. And Peter Clark as well. They've got a few of those older boys, but... There's still that. There's still life in the old dog yet. So keep an eye out for Tranmere Rovers. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget, every single Thursday, 4 p.m., I will be live on the League of 72 channel talking about all things EFL, looking at all 72 clubs. So if you want to join us for the exclusive access and, of course, watching some of your favourite goals from your team, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell.